but only if FSF were the winners of the auction. It's something I've not come across before. You know, somebody loses £18 million, that's Asta, Cray, Tone, Forward Sports between them, and then insist that the person who has lost them that money be allowed to buy the club back, and that if not, they will vote against it. Um, it, to my mind, they were associated. I've not yet seen how the association, which is in the accounts I have here, was ever broken. So, just to repeat, the investors who'd lost a staggering £18 million under Ken Bates still insisted that he remain in charge. FSF, which had owned Leeds before they went bust, now bought back a debt-free club for under £2 million. Bates, who was only the UK representative of FSF, with no personal money invested, was back at Elland Road. And while the high-earning players were all paid in full, the non-football creditors, such as Russell's Patisserie, received only a few pence for every pound they were owed. We were owed in the region of £2,700 uh, in total. We got back uh, a cheque for just under £50, which I think was two pence in the pound. Ken Bates has always denied that before May of this year, he was the owner of Leeds United. Not everyone believes him. There can be few people in football who privately do not believe that Ken Bates has effectively been in control of the club for most of the last six years. The answers given by the club to questions about its ownership over that period stretch credibility to say the least. Damien Collins is a member of the Culture, Media and Sports Committee of the House of Commons. The committee has been investigating football governance, with Leeds United's opaque ownership featuring heavily. Ken Bates thinks that the issue of who owns Leeds and who owns football clubs is an obsession of a few journalists and a few politicians. And he's completely wrong, because fans really do want to know who owns their clubs. When something goes wrong in a football club, uh, and that football club loses money, that club goes into administration, it's the fans that lose out by seeing their team fall through the leagues. It's the local businesses that trade with that club that lose out when it goes into administration and they get virtually nothing for the money that they're owed. And it's always the money men, people like Ken Bates, who walk away uh, and they're always protected and they live to fight another day. In a court case brought by Leeds in Jersey, a judge ordered Ken Bates to reveal the names of FSF's owners. Surprisingly, for a man who was the UK representative of FSF, Bates told the court that he didn't own any shares and that he had no knowledge of the identity of the company's shareholders. In a sworn affidavit to the court, Ken Bates said that only Chateau Fiduciaire, the Swiss management company, knew who the owners were of FSF and therefore of Leeds United. Chateau Fiduciaire wrote to the court saying that Ken Bates did not own shares in FSF but they declined to say who did. Three shareholders share equally the 10,000 shares in FSF, but it is not the policy of this company to release information on ultimate ownership without an appropriate court order valid in Switzerland. The most obvious person who might be able to clear up the mystery of the ownership of Leeds United is Ken Bates. By early August, the Leeds chairman had picked up on rumours that the BBC was researching this documentary. From his home in Monaco, Mr Bates called my producer, Neil Morrow. We asked him for an interview. I'm simply saying to you that we would like to do an interview with you where you get your say in response to the questions that fans have. Fans want to know who owns Leeds United. Mr Bates later sent us an email to confirm that he wouldn't be participating in the programme. In my dealings in the past with the BBC, the bloated, biased corporation, I've found them to be thoroughly untrustworthy. Not only were we refused an interview, but around the same time Leeds banned BBC reporters from attending the club's press conferences. Also in August, angry Leeds United supporters demonstrated against Ken Bates. The lack of spending on players over the summer had riled fans, while in contrast millions were being spent on corporate facilities at Elland Road. Why is Ken Bates the only person who, want, who would buy that club uh, and claiming he doesn't know who owns the club? As far as we're concerned, since 2007 when we went into administration and got 15 points, Ken Bates has been our owner. And then for this to come out a few months ago that he's now regained the majority share is something that us as fans had not, no idea about. 
Three days later, in his match programme note, Mr Bates responded to the supporters' chance for him to leave the club. I'm unimpressed by the demonstrations of a few morons on Saturday and ain't going anywhere soon. Some fans may not like me or agree with me, but you're stuck with me. I saved your club in 2005 and 2007 when nobody else would. The rebuilding of Leeds United is a bit like sex. In an age of instant gratification, Leeds United is having a long drawn out affair with plenty of foreplay and slow arousal. I mean, how do people feel about this, the, this stuff being in the programme from the chairman of Leeds United? Well, from the feedback from, from our membership, we had, a, again, a number of emails and, uh, and, and comments along the lines of, you know, this is embarrassing, um, it's something that, that the chairman of the club should not be saying. We get this quite often because, you know, usually there's something in there that will offend somebody um, from match to match, but the, the most recent ones seem to sort of push it to a new level. So what have the people in charge of football made of what went on at Leeds? The authorities were embarrassed when Portsmouth, then in the Premier League, almost went bankrupt in February 2010. As a result, the rules governing ownership of clubs in the top division were tightened. The owners and directors of football clubs have to pass what's called a fit and proper persons test. It's designed to make sure that the people who own clubs are upstanding, they're not criminals or fraudsters, and they're proper people to be in charge of clubs. The Premier League's new test for owners and directors required them to be fit and proper people and anyone who owned 10% or more of a club had to be publicly identified. This would mean the fans could be sure who owned their clubs. The Premier League then required the Football League to implement exactly the same rules of transparency for its clubs. In March 2010, Leeds United passed the fit and proper persons test but neither the league nor the club said who actually owned Leeds United. Last summer they had to publish that information, but they said that nobody owned more than 10% of the club, and that meant that they didn't have to state who the individuals were who owned Leeds United. After three years in League One, Leeds returned to the Championship in 2010, and in their first season back, United possibly overachieved under Simon Grayson. For most of last year, Leeds were challenging for promotion to the Premier League. It's a pleasant surprise. We didn't expect to be pushing for promotion. But the Premier League was not about to allow Leeds into its elite competition unless the club revealed the identity of the owners of FSF. In April, the Premier League's position over Leeds was made very clear by its chief executive, Richard Scudamore. He was speaking to MPs on the Culture, Media and Sport Committee, who were investigating football governance and the ownership of Leeds United. From my understanding of the way our rules are written, we absolutely will require disclosure from Leeds United, which is over and beyond that that the Football League is required. Why doesn't your rules... At the next sitting of the committee, Alex Horn, the General Secretary of the Football Association, was asked if the FA knew who owned Leeds United. Well, I, um, I pressed Alex Horn on this question of did they actually know who the owners of Leeds United were? And he said that he didn't, but that within the Football Association there were people that had been told. So he suggested that maybe in terms of confidence that the Football Association had been told to give them reassurance and they were happy there were no problems you know, with the rules. Um, it became apparent pretty quickly afterwards that the FA didn't feel they could defend that position. They wanted to check the transcript of what had been said and they then wrote back to the committee to say actually they weren't aware of the identity of the investors in the FSF Trust who owned Leeds United. In other words, even at the Football Association, English football's overall governing body, nobody knew who owned Leeds United. And as it turns out, nobody at the Football League knew either. Ken Bates may not speak to the BBC, but talking on Leeds United's own radio station, he was dismissive of the MP's investigation. This is supposed to be the all the all inspiring, earth shaking, fearless investigation into football generally. And the things I've read so far don't amount to a row of beans. We asked the Football League to explain why it approved Leeds United's ownership arrangements without ever being told who the owners actually were. But nobody from the league, including the chairman Greg Clark, was prepared to talk to us on camera. They did provide us with a brief statement. With regard to the ownership of Leeds United, the Football League is satisfied, based on the information submitted by the club, 
that it has complied with the Football League owners and directors test. Any discussions and exchanges of information between Leeds United and the Football League are on a confidential basis, as is the case with all our clubs. The president of European football's governing body, Michel Platini, believes that football clubs are a key part of a country's heritage and it's unreasonable to conceal the identity of the owners of a team. The supporters, they love their club and they have their own identity and they would know who is, uh, who is uh, the guy who will be the president of their own club. I think uh, a club is, uh, is a club now, uh, it's, a big, uh, it's a big identity, it's a big uh, monument of the story uh, of the history of uh, England and like clubs like Arsenal, Manchester. But if you don't know who is the owner, I say, uh, it's like if you don't know who is the owner of Buckingham. It's the same for me. Sadly for Leeds supporters, United's form on the pitch dipped badly after Easter this year. Hopes of promotion were fading away. But just at the point that the riches of the Premier League were out of the club's grasp, the anonymous owners of FSF now suddenly decided to find a buyer for the club. The new owner was Ken Bates. The man who said that he'd never put a penny of his own money into the club was now officially, for the first time, the owner of Leeds United. Typically, Bates bought FSF using an obscure company he claims to wholly own called Outro Limited, based in the tax haven of Nevis in the West Indies. We have no idea how much he paid for the club, and because it all took place offshore, thousands of miles from Leeds, the taxman won't have had a look in. As far as Ken Bates is concerned, with Outro buying the club, he's answered all questions about the ownership of Leeds United. But in July, the Culture, Media and Sports Committee published its report into football governance. It slammed Leeds United, saying there is no more blatant an example of lack of transparency. We were appalled, I think, of what had been going on, that um, a club had no known owner um, and that the football authorities were saying that they had applied their tests over ownership uh, that the p people were fit and proper, there were no issues around you know, open and fair competition between clubs and they didn't know who owned Leeds United. It seemed totally inconsistent with everything they'd said. But how can the Football League be satisfied that the fans' reasonable desire to know who owns their club has been answered by Ken Bates and Leeds United? If Ken Bates didn't own Leeds United from 2005, then just who did? And why did those mystery owners suddenly sell to him in May this year in what looks like an unseemly rush? And how much did Ken Bates' outro pay for the club? Well, here's what we do know about Leeds United. Ken Bates, who's based in the tax haven of Monaco, claims to own a company that is based in the tax haven of Nevis that in turn owns the majority of Leeds United. Oh, and while we're at it, Elland Road is currently owned by a company based in the tax haven of the British Virgin Islands. A more opaque structure you could hardly find. I've been asking these questions about Leeds United for six years and it's not because I have any kind of grudge against the club. Far from it. I have a soft spot for Leeds United. But where a club is owned through a network of offshore tax havens under a cloak of anonymity, and it's left creditors and charities and public bodies high and dry, then it's legitimate to ask whether the club is justifying the loyalty, the lifelong loyalty, which the fans show for their club.